slave discipline the same thing as punishment? Not exactly. In fact, if we were to talk about it as punishment, that would be confusing because different people define punishment differently. If we take the way behavioral science defines punishment, punishment is anything that makes a behavior less likely to happen. So if I say, stop that, and the person doesn't do it again, then because I made the behavior less likely to happen in the future, that stop that would be classed as punishment. So in some ways, you could define discipline as punishment, but the way people generally think of punishment, it's doing something horrible to somebody to teach a lesson or to coerce them into not doing that thing again in future. And it may include things like hitting, shouting, threatening, or giving the silent treatment. These are all the sorts of things which come to mind when we speak about punishment, because I think in the popular understanding of punishment, it's more like meeting out a dose of pain to teach a lesson, which is how it was defined in the John Gray book. So I would like to talk about discipline as something distinct from punishment. I think that they could overlap sometimes if we take the more scientific definition of punishment, but it's going to be confusing if we speak about discipline as punishment because of some of those other negative associations that we have with it. I would like us to think about discipline differently. Think about the fact that discipline comes from the same root word as disciple. And when we think of the word disciple, what comes to mind? I suppose it depends on which context I say this in. I get different answers. Once I gave a talk at a special needs school and I was asking the staff, what comes to mind when I say the word disciple? And one of the teachers said, well, it's like the shepherd with the sheep. And I said, what a lovely illustration, the shepherd with the sheep. And then he said, as if he'd sort of caught me out, yeah, and a shepherd usually has a stick here. And I realized what he was getting at. Um, you see, at that stage in our country, there were a lot of teachers who were feeling a bit hard done by because corporal punishment had been banned in schools. And some of them were finding that their toolkit seemed a little empty when it came to dealing with bad behavior. So he said, the shepherd usually has a stick, hey? But now if we think about this, if we think about this, have you ever walked past the field and seen the shepherd hitting the sheep with that stick? Is that what they do? I'd like to suggest that that is not what the shepherd uses his stick for. The sheep are not tied to him. They need to stay with him. And he starts beating them. It'll be chaos. They'll run away from him because they won't feel safe with him. The sheep feeling safe with the shepherd is one of the reasons why the shepherd sheep thing works. They need to feel safe with him. So what does he actually use that stick for? And when I ask that question, I usually get answers like for guidance. You know, like if the sheep are sort of following each other and they might just fall in a ditch, he might hold the stick there. So they meet that stick and go, eh. Okay, can't go there eh, and go in another direction. Not hitting them. Hitting them would cause chaos because then they wouldn't know what's happening. Why are we being hit? They'd probably start running around and fall into that ditch. So he would use it gently, just putting it as a boundary. Don't go there. And maybe on the other side, don't go there. Eh, eh, okay, eh, eh, we'll go in a different direction, right? So for guidance, he uses that stick for guidance. What else would he be using that stick for? for protection. He needs to protect the sheep. Sheep are tasty to various predators. And I'm sure if a predator came over the mountain in the night and wanted to eat one of those sheep, he may need to use that stick to chase the predator away. He might need to use it to support himself when he gets tired, so it makes his life easier. And so if we can think about the stick like that, it gives us a better idea of what, what discipline is about. It's about guidance. It's about protection of our children. And it does certainly make our lives a lot easier when we have boundaries. When I speak about nonviolent discipline, some people quote scriptures and say things like, spare the rod and boil the child. And this is where I would say, 
are we sure we understand what a rod is for? Because in another part of the scripture, it says something like, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And so it goes on. And then it says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. So we're talking about the stick that a shepherd carries around. Why would it be comforting to the little sheep if he was using it to beat them? That's what we need to think about when we think about spare the rod. We need to not spare the protection, not spare the comfort. That's actually the heart of the matter. And when children are without protection, when children are without comfort, that's when we mess things up. What research actually shows us is that what is really dangerous to children, what really has bad results later on in terms of delinquent behavior, violent behavior, dangerous behavior in children later on, when children start out in homes where they face danger, unprotected and uncomforted. And if we look at the research, what danger are children facing? The most common place for them to experience danger is in fact in their own homes. This is where they may experience being hit, kicked, beaten. This is where they may incur a broken bone or a bruise. And if we look at why, why parents would do this to their own children, we see that mostly they do it as punishment to correct misbehavior. And so instead of feeling safe in their own homes, children are experiencing danger. The people who are hurting children are in fact the people who are responsible for their care and protection. When children are hit and hurt in their own homes, in their own schools, they are facing danger, unprotected and uncomforted. They are getting the message, you deserve this because you are bad. So in this series of videos, what we want to show you is how to support children's good behavior in a way which doesn't hurt them. That's all for now. If you would like to find out more about nonviolent discipline, visit our website at www.peacediscipline.com or subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.